So thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm going to start not with Galois representations, but with a, a geometric analog that's maybe a little more appealing at first glance. Uh, and also, I think, ultimately, a bit more interesting. So there's a classical construction to the Kugan Satake that does the following. It takes a uh, complex K3 surface and associates to it um, a complex abelian variety. And the way roughly that this works is the K3, you take its interesting cohomology, it's H2, that has this quadratic pairing. You can form the associated Clifford algebra. And then, through some cleverness, you impose a weight one Hodge structure on that Clifford algebra. And it turns out you get a complex abelian variety. Um, K3 isn't strictly essential here. What you really need is a Hodge structure that has the same type sort of formulae. Um, so a, a K3, for example, has H20 equals 1. And that's, that's sort of essential to this basic construction. Another a more general class of geometric examples would come from H2 of a hyperkähler. Um, and uh, so there's a, a reinterpretation of this construction. And so, so this construction is handy for reducing results about K3s to results for abelian varieties. Um, first big example of this was in uh, Deline's proof of the Ve conjectures for K3s, uh, which passes through this construction to reduce to the abelian variety case, which is known by, I guess, work of Ve. And implicit in, in that paper is the following reinterpretation. Uh, so just take on faith that this H2 we can think of as a motive over C. Won't be precise about what that means yet. But. And as such, we get a representation of a group, which we call the motivic Galois group, which is the following. So if you take uh, the category of pure motives over C, for homological equivalence. Uh, conjecturally, this should be a Tanakian category, which just means that there is a group, a pro-algebraic group, whose representations correspond to objects of the category. So in particular, here's an object, so we get a representation. And in that picture, one way of thinking about the Kuga Satake construction, and this is where lifting projective representations will come in, is that there's a central torus quotient down to this orthogonal group. So G spin is just spin where you extend the center to be a torus. Uh, and this construction is basically, it's not equivalent. This statement's a little more robust. But uh, it's implied by the statement that there is a lifting at the level of maps of Motivic Galois group. Um, so, what I mean, so this 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 group doesn't exist because one doesn't know the standard conjectures. But there are unconditional variants in which you can make sense of this motivic group. The uh, first such is the theory of rather than motives for homological cycles, motives for what are known as absolute Hodge cycles. This is due to Deline. Um, and a, another version that is also handy sometime, absolute Hodge cycles. Uh, a variant, much inspired by this theory, is motives for so-called motivated cycles. That's due to Yves Andre. And in either of these theories, you unconditionally get a Tanakian category of motives that, if you knew the standard conjectures, would be the same as the uh, Groth and Deeks version. OK. Um, 
So staying with K3s a moment longer, uh, in fact, this construction has some arithmetic. It, the construction is, I mean, as I described it, it's completely transcendental. But it does have some arithmetic aspects. And there's a result of André that also sort of builds on the original techniques of Dulin in that Bay conjecture paper that say if your x is over some subfield of C, then the construction, this, this abelian variety, actually descends not maybe to f itself, but to some finite extension, abelian variety over some finite extension of f. But in fact, you can, you can go farther than this. And there's an, a really fairly sharp arithmetic refinement, which is that you can, over f, what you're getting here is a representation of the corresponding motivic group for motives over f. Well, this doesn't necessarily land in SO, um, but maybe if you make a quadratic extension on f, it will. So let me just do that. And you can ask if over f there's a lifting at the level of motivic Galois groups. And es essentially there is. You have, to, uh, you have to introduce coefficients. And so there's a, a little bit of a technicality in formulating it. But roughly, the answer to this question is yes. You can get an, a complete arithmetic refinement of this construction and get a motive over f that really becomes the uh, Kuga Satake motive. It's not going to be just an abelian variety. It'll be more complicated. It'll be built out of abelian varieties and Artin motives. <coughs> okay. So uh, the, I started thinking about this problem because of a, a purely Galois theoretic question. It's the title of the talk. So now we'll go entirely do arithmetic, forget K3s, forget G-spin, and think about the following general setting. So let gamma f be the absolute Galois group of now f will be a number field. There's uh, an old theorem of Tate that says projective representations of this gal f always lift to honest representations. Always lift. So in general, that's not true for a group. I mean, if you take a finite group, there will be obstructions to getting lifts like this. It's old theory due to sure. But what's t what Tate's theorem says is that sort of sure obstructions, which live in a homology group like this, actually vanish. And so I want to just compare you know, this statement here with the existence of lifts over there. Uh, and now talk about a sort of ge geometric refinement on the Galois side of this result. Um, so there is an, an abstract Galois theoretic notion of what it means for a just a homomorphism from Galois to QL bar points of some linear algebraic group over QL bar. Notion of a homomorphism rho to be uh, being geometric. This is in the sense of fontaine Maser. It doesn't actually say that it comes from geometry. It says it has the formal properties that we expect characterize the things that do come from geometry. And so, in parallel with Tate, you can ask if you have some quotient like this, where now the key thing here is that you're killing a central torus. So this is a central torus quotient. So this is something like GLN to PGLN or G-spin to SO. So if you're in this setup, uh, 
does every uh, geometric row from gal f to h q l bar lift, well, we know it lifts by Tate's theorem, but does every geometric row lift to a geometric representation? Say row twiddles. Running out of space here. And uh, the answer to that question is usually yes. Um, the answer is typically yes. So if, uh, if f is totally imaginary, so all its complex embeddings, n well, none of its complex embeddings land in R, and the answer to this question is yes. Um, in general, there is a parity obstruction. Uh, there is a parity obstruction. I won't go into this parity obstruction. It's sort of a subject of another talk, maybe. But uh, what this tells you is that most of the time, the answer is yes. And you can try to transfer that intuition back to the uh, motivic side. And so the kind of question that I'm thinking about, not, not as a general problem, it's, it's hard as a general problem, but at least try to work out some cases of it, is to try to put these two together and, and ask about lifting motivic Galois representations of, you know, where this quotient h prime to h is some central torus quotient like so. Um, so again, this is motivic Galois group over f. Motivic Galois. And um, so yeah, I mean, I described a couple special cases over there. Uh, typically, there's a lot you can say when you're in the world of abelian varieties. And uh, it becomes much, much harder as soon as you leave the comfort of how Hodge theory works for abelian varieties. But um, you know, there's maybe, maybe some other cases that are tractable. Do I have more time? I can one minute. One minute? OK. Uh, well, that's, that's enough. Um,